Hello, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of A Shot Rundown. I'm Nick Thiel. And I'm Gabe Graham. And, and we're, we're your hosts. hosts. To start the show, we have to congratulate our performing arts programs. We really do. 18, yes, 18 students at HHS made the ARK CDA Region 6 All-Region Choir, and 14 of them qualified to audition at the Arkansas All-State Choir in February. They are Alex Marley, Gracie Head, Lydia McCormick, Savvy Davidson, Faith Nix, Chloe Shorb, Kirsten Palmer, Kyler Carraway, Madison Ramsey, Mystique Pangle, Elizabeth Hunter, Mariah Lazarde, Alana Adamos, Jacob Bailey, Garrett Cash, Nick Perpich, Brian Tolhurst, Zach Jimerson, and Adam Richter. In addition to the choir members, the Golden Goblin Pride of Northwest Arkansas Marching Band performed the Region 6 Marching, ass marching Assessment and received First Division Superior Ratings from all three judges. That's impressive with a completely new band director staff. It really is. Congratulations to Mr. Bradford, Mr. Skelly, Mr. Wyatt, and all of the band members. Now, on to the show. Good stories to look at today. classrooms at HHS this fall. There are two. Our staff members recently caught up with Ms. Thomas in the library and Ms. Wooten in facts. Let's go to Luke Lunsford and Colette Campbell for an introduction of both teachers for Goblin Nation. We do have rules here and you will have to obey them. As long as I can use the round blocks, Fudge said. I am Tracy Thomas and I'm the new librarian. What's yes, happening? Sir. He said you didn't like me as my, my sister-in-law. He's helping John with his Chromebook canvas account. It's not working. I can't hear that library so loud. You know what? The you library's the fine. Right the library's fine. We're, we're building relationships like you wanted me to. Okay. <laughs> you go back to your office. He is married to my sister, Carla. They've been married a long time, which is kind of nice because if he makes me mad, then I just tell on him. And I've been in elementary for the last, well, all of my work history, so for 20 years. It's not that much difference. I've had to learn the books because I'm used to reading and being very familiar with all the books and authors for an elementary and middle school age level. Trying to learn and read all the YAs, I'm reading all the time. And I'm just trying to get caught up on that. And then research, like the college courses and trying to help kids with research, that's more advanced than what I'm used to. So just kind of relearning all the stuff I did in college. You know, we got new shelves last year. I'm trying really hard to get those all organized. I've already changed up the library quite a bit, moved the circulation desk, moving the books around. I really want it to be a place that people want to be. I want it to be open, welcoming, and just kids want to be in here. Place to learn, read, whatever. I'd like to get some more fun furniture, soft seating. I've ordered a couple of um, chess games from Amazon. So maybe have some game centers and stuff set up and things like that, but just real open and welcoming and I want it to be used all the time. The book that's most important in my life to me is the Bible. Fiction, books, I do love the Harry Potter series. I'm a big Harry Potter nerd. I love to kill a mockingbird. Why can't you be Dean It is very loud in the library. That's why I'm so glad that Mr. Parker set up these little quiet rooms because I know people do come in here sometimes because they need that quiet space. I'm not a quiet person. If you look in the 1994 yearbook, you're gonna find me under voted loudest seniors who do. So it's very hard for me to be quiet and so I don't really shush any of the kids. <clears throat> the ones that come in here that really want quiet, they wanna read or study or do something and they need it quiet, they usually come in one of the quiet rooms. So I suggest that we transfer Fudge to Miss Ziff's kindergarten. Splendid idea, Mrs. Hildebrandt said. The sooner, the better. This is Colette Campbell from GOB TV with the new Family and Consumer Sciences teacher, Miss Wooten. 
Hi, I'm Mrs. Wooten and I teach Family and Consumer Sciences. I'm an alumni from Harrison, so it's near and dear to my heart. I've always believed that, I mean, it's life, it's life skills. We're talking about raising children and nutrition and how the foods that we put in our body matter and how to prepare those meals. We talk about every aspect of life and I really feel like this pandemic has kind of magnified how important our just everyday life skills are just relevant to us. There's no one that just doesn't need to know these basic skills. Uh, my first year of teaching I taught summer school. Um, it was like a fun cooking summer school activity and we were making cookies and we were making a pretty large amount of cookies for like our final day and it was like a large gathering of like a hundred people and so we were making tons and tons of cookies and my poor little eighth graders read the recipe wrong <laughs> instead of putting a fourth teaspoon of salt into their chocolate chip cookies they put a fourth cup cup into their chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> oh so, and, and being the, the sweet first year teacher, not knowing any better and didn't want to hurt their feelings, I tried it and I tasted salt in my mouth for like three days. <laughs> Signing off, this is Colette Campbell from Gob TV. So I learned something new today. I had no idea that Mrs. Thomas was Mr. Parker's sister-in-law. Yup, but HHS isn't the only place with new faces. Recently, the police department welcomed a new staff member. Lanny Barrett and Emily Hargett spent the morning with him a couple days ago. Check this out. I'm Lanny Barrett and I'm Emily Hargett, and we're here at the police department to meet the newest member of the Harrison K-9 unit. Batty here. This is uh, Batty, B-A-D-Y, pronounced Batty. I call him Bad Dog sometimes. He is a dual-purpose canine. He's an 18-month-old Belgian Malinois. Um, he is certified, we're both certified in narcotics detection. He'll, he'll find narcotics in vehicles, lockers, backpacks, fields, yards, it don't matter. He'll find them all. Um, we also do tracking anywhere from young infants, you know, young kids that walk away, missing children. He'll, he'll track your grandma, grandpa, if they end up walking away, uh, the elderly. Um, he'll track suspects that either run from us. He was born April end of April 2019 they sent him over to Holland and from Slovak Republic he did um, training over there I don't know how long it was um, but they started doing some training over there the kennel owner from Pennsylvania flew over to Holland um, and they picked him out and he did seven weeks of training in Pennsylvania and then I went up and did six more weeks of training with him so at a minimum 13 weeks but he did more than that we get up early in the morning um, I take him outside, let him go to the bathroom, I'll put him in the car, I'll get dressed, we'll come into work, and I'll, I'll stop cars until I need to use him, or if somebody else stops a car and they need him, or somebody at a house needs us, we'll assist drug task force and search warrants, we'll assist the county in search warrants, um, anybody that needs his help in the area, we'll go help. So, I mean, it's, he hangs out in the back of the car, that's his office. We train minimum 16 hours a week, or a month, I'm sorry, 16 hours a month we train, and that's just minimum because I'll, I'll do training with him here at work as well. We'll do apprehension work, we'll do drug work, uh, we'll do obedience, healing, sit, stay, down, return, you know, recall. Uh, we do article searching, uh, we'll do tracking. Being successful is, is finding drugs, finding bad guys, finding you know, your grandma who's walked out the door, it, it don't matter. I mean, like I said, when he tracks, he, 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 he doesn't differentiate between a bad guy or an elderly person. All what he's doing is tracking human odor. If he's doing his job properly and I'm, I'm doing my job properly for him, then it's, that's a good thing. Batty is a beautiful dog, and I would imagine a huge asset to the HPD. One healthy stop has become rather popular in H-Town. Faith Humphrey and Maddie Branch made a trip to the Healthy Hub. Take it away, ladies. So one of our most favorite shake products would be the banana pudding. It is definitely number one, and our most popular tea out of all of our teas is pineapple punch. Monday through Friday, 6.30 in the morning till 6 at night. 
Saturday, 8 to 2, and Sunday, 10 to 2. This was a very good area, and Harrison really needed it. Shakes, meal replacement protein shakes, metabolism boosting teas, supplements, fat burning shots, aloe shots. They are metabolism boosting teas, and a lot of people who need them every single day to get through to make people healthier and make their days happier. This is Faith and Maddie from Golf TV, reporting with you from the Healthy Hub. Last night was the final presidential debate before the election, and even though the halls of HHS are filled with students who aren't old enough to vote yet, a few shared their political views with Alexa Ramsey and Brooke Boyd. Here's a look at that. By now you know election day is in 11 days. Gop TV went to the hallways of HHS to talk to students about their political views. If I could vote in this year's election, I would definitely be voting for Biden-Harris just because I don't think that Trump is taking some of the issues in this country seriously and I know that they have a plan for climate change and I think that is something that is very important and needs to be dealt with. I would vote for Donald Trump because um, when he was president he just boomed the economy. It went all the way up. Jobs have been great. My opinion as a teacher on this is um, politicians should stop trying to mask what they're really doing um, the power grabs that they're doing, both in 2016 and now, they need to stop masking it and trying to legitimize them in some kind of historical context. And they need to just say what they're saying, which is, hey, we have the power, we're going to do what we want. And if they did that, I would be such a happy person because we can change the dynamics of power and we can change interpretations of the Constitution change. We can even change Senate rules. But when it's clouded with so much mystique dust that we really don't know what people are really thinking, that's when it becomes convoluted and the American people get confused. Voting on voting for Joe Biden because he prioritizes issues such as climate change, police reform, and women's rights. If I could vote in this year's election, I'd vote for Donald Trump because he has good political views and I like his immigration laws. Election day is November 3rd. For Gob TV, I'm Brooke Boyd. I don't know that last night's debate made voters feel any more informed about either candidate's stance on the issue, but election day is November 3rd. You know who I think we should elect president today? Who, Gabe? Coach Joel Wells. I like that, Gabe. I don't, I don't know where he stands on politics, but he leads the Golden Goblins well, and they play for a conference title tonight in Molson. Baby Jay Parker got to visit with Coach Wells earlier in the week. Go ahead and check this out. Thank you for coming in, Coach Wells. Now let's talk about some football. Can you give us a conference standing update? Yeah, at this point, uh, it's kind of a unique year. Not everybody's going to get to play all their games. So uh, everybody's got one at least uh, at least one canceled. Uh, but right now, uh, we're 3-0 and in the conference, and so is Moralton. So uh, everyone else uh, at least has one loss, and most of them have two losses. Now, what have you prepared to face Moralton this week? Well, I mean, Morton's a, a, a really quick football team, uh, well coached, and uh, you know we, you know, obviously uh, we need to be prepared uh, for their running game. Uh, they have a really, really effective running back, uh, offensive line, and uh, their defense is very quick to the football. So we, we, you know, we worked on some, some, uh, some things to to implement uh, to help us against those things. Now, what can us Goblin fans expect to see from? the team offensively? Well, you know, uh, we got uh, Brad McDuck injured a couple of weeks ago, and and so uh, we've, we've kind of moved to an empty backfield formation, five-wide formation uh, most of the time, and uh, you'll see more of that. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can, you know, the, we can, we've had a tremendous amount of success throwing the football, and uh, I think uh, you'll see more of that Friday night. Thank you, Coach Wells. Go Dons. It's always a treat when Coach stops by the studio. Good luck to him and the rest of the coaching staff and their team. Let's not forget volleyball, who played in the conference match this week, advancing to state in Jonesboro at Valley View. Best of luck to April Maddox and the Lady Goblins. And one more shout out to the Goblin and Lady Goblin cross country teams competing in the conference race Monday at 4 p.m. at Shiloh Christian. Good luck to all those athletes. 
We'll leave you with the last week's highlight video of Senior Night. Remember, you can see the game at Moralton tonight on Gob TV, thanks to Crossroads Community Church, who is sponsoring the stream. Go Gobs! It's never too late to change our lives.